and welcome to another episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Uh, today's guest, well, she's actually known as another uh, name. Um, it's Lad Baby Mum, Mum of Two. Uh, I would say, how do you even word that? She's had the last two Christmas number ones. She's written a book and she was Celebrity Mum of the Year 2019. I know. It's Roxanne Hoyle. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I mean, that's quite a... Quite an intro, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mental for someone who can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hi, thanks. <laughs> but so, of it, like, Christmas number one. I know. To go for it once is one thing. Yeah. To go for it twice <clears throat> is unbelievable, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a uh, experience and something I never thought after meeting Mark or doing Lab Baby that we would have a Christmas number one twice. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're like. We're up there now with the Beatles and the Spice Girls. Oh, my God. I know. Has anyone ever done it three times? Uh, oh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe the Beatles did it third. Mm. But, yeah, I mean, mm. I love the Spice Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I was always a fan, so, yeah, I can sort of say that now. But, yeah, it's a, it's a crazy thing to uh, achieve that. And, well, yeah, it blown my mind. I can't really, I can't explain it. It's quite weird. And there's a massive reason why you went for it. Oh, yes, obviously. It was... So, obviously, my husband is crazy. <laughs> no. For um, anyone who doesn't know, no. <laughs> you two kind of prank each other all the time. Yeah. Your videos that you share online are little snippets of you two as a couple and kind of exploring life with kids. Yeah. And it's yeah. very funny and one each other up a lot. Yeah. So, Lab Baby is kind of a family... Well, I would say now it's like a family entertainment yeah. channel. That's what people say to me. Oh, your family... Yeah, you're the family. But, um, yeah, it's just us, me and my husband, my two little boys. And um, Mark started Lab Baby and we film our life. Um, And Mark does crazy sometimes pranks. I do them back now because I'm just like, you know what? You're not having all the fun. But I think the day that you wrapped his car (laughs) in your face for Valentine's Day was the best. I think that was the first video I'd ever seen of yours and it made me howl with laughter. I mean, that was my favourite moment in life. <laughs> and I've, you know, apart from my children, but it was up there. It was Valentine's Day and I was like, what can I get a man that has everything? <laughs> so I got my face blown up and put it on the side of his car about 2,900 times. And uh, yeah, filmed it and it was the best thing ever. That you video literally was literally not tell each other what you're planning. Do you just no. go for it? No, they're all like real reactions and stuff. I didn't tell him at all that. I just took I took his car and just went, I'm going to go and do this. And I filmed it and uh, he hated it and he still <laughs> drives it. <laughs> I, make, I make him still drive that car. But that video was insane. Over 70 million people watched that. Yeah, around the world. Because we, we have like 20 million people who watch us a week. That's on Lab crazy. Baby. Yeah. So Facebook has become like an amazing family for us. And it's all around the world that people message us because people say, oh, it's pranks and this and that and hacks. And but what it originally and what it is now is like we're trying to do things for good. And yeah, we, we do our videos and we are our no- a normal family as normal as they are. But, you know, we just film our life and people seem to have liked it and we still can't believe that so many people watch it but but it's a lovely thing isn't it to see a to see a family enjoying themselves as well yeah it's hard parenting's hard isn't it and it's like you look I look forward to these like one week I went rally driving drift driving (laughs) around with a champion and I thought I was going to die and then the week after I'm like covering Mark's face (laughs) his car in my sticker so every week is slightly different so those moments in between of parenting it kind of you look forward forward to kind of videos and stuff and the boys love it but yeah that so for Christmas and stuff we and even now we try and do things for good and use our social media for good and we originally started Lab Baby well Mark started Lab Baby because he didn't know how to parent <laughs> <laughs> he had never even held a baby ever ever and he's a big man so that I mean he's you'd six think... foot eight and he's yeah. like a bear um and he well what basketball bear I would say it's <laughs> quite tall um but he yeah he'd never held a baby he'd never pushed a pram he'd never like he didn't know anything and um, really I mean I'd held a few kids and stuff my friends had had kids but yeah. we had no clue so for us parenting became like Whoa, we get to live our childhood again. <laughs> Woohoo! There's like cool toys and, you know, we're doing cool things and we just sort of filmed it and, you know, there are times where it's hard. So for us, it was something that 
we used that baby to fill those moments and lift us up and and then we got messages from around the world. I mean, I get thousands a week from people saying, thanks for getting me through this heartache or I've lost my parents or, mm. you know, um, we love watching your family and um, help them through depression. And it's a, a lot of, of people escapism, use it for anxiety. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's one of those things that we're just like, wow, like we'll never, we'll never stop. But for us, it's just something we've created. That, and now it's making a big impact, like the Christmas song, it was for the Trestle Trust, so we for food banks in the UK, and um, we found out two years ago that there was like 14 million people in the UK who um, just was living in poverty in the UK. And I was mm. like, "What?" And uh, we went to some food banks this year and stuff, and we've been in and out of them. And their mums, just like me, yeah, just in circumstances of you know all different kinds of circumstances with their kids. My kids were playing with them, you know, and they were just like, "Just haven't got food this week." And I was just like, no, nah, man, mm -hmm. it's just not, that shouldn't be happening. So the song every year that we have done, we've donated all the profits to the Trussell Trust. And we've they've messaged us this year saying it's just changed their charity. Really? It's, yeah, because people were donating. Well, they were walking in from a video. I, d I think a lot of people didn't realise what food banks were. Mm -hmm. So the video that we did, we did a video where we went into a food bank and just showed you the process of what you would have to go through if it happened to you. And um, it just, it went massive, that video. Because, because I think people don't see it, do they? No. They hear things about what these places yeah. are. You're told whatever. People are in crisis or yeah. everyone's living in the under the poverty line, but no one really knows what that is. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, like me and Mark were like, well, what it, would that be for us? Yeah. So we went in and filmed it. Just kind of, we didn't show anyone. No one really wanted to be filmed, actually. Mm -hmm. because, um, and we just showed the process and the volunteers and stuff. And apparently loads of people turned up going, we've seen their video, we need to help you. So many donations this Christmas that they had to stop um, yeah. accepting them. Yeah. And now, you know, all of the money, it raised over, last year's raised seven, over 70,000 emergency food packages in the UK that went out to families who needed That's it. That's amazing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's one of those amazing things when you can team your family, something you really love doing with just good. Mm. You know, there's a lot of people going, doing things that aren't for good. And, and that's okay. There's a place for that. But for us, we're just about you know, families and doing good and... Well, for, uh, oh, you know, I'm <coughs> fully behind you. And I just think that what yeah, you yeah. created and what you do, that is what Christmas is about. Yeah. It's, it's about having that community and having each other's backs. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's such a... There is, you know, now I think we're at six million that follow us, yeah. um, like across, across all of it. Yeah. And we were like, what can we... How can we use that? And how can we... This this Christmas, people people want to give for ninety nine p. If you can afford that, that's not a lot to download a song, and that song will always donate to that. So yeah. in years to if it keeps getting donated over the many years, you know, like the classics, then that will always go to it. So it'll always fund <laughs> it. <laughs> no sausage roll songs being <laughs> part I'm of the classic Christmas fan. Mark's a massive sausage roll fan, so yeah, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> crazy but it was a, a, a magical moment for us yeah definitely yeah quite. so what was your childhood like wow my well my childhood was actually really I would say quite positive quite my mum was like come on girls you know like she's she, my mum's got my laugh I said to you earlier yeah. my mum my laugh is from my mum. We're in a room and it's like, ha, 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 ha. It's the same thing. Um, my family were just working class family. Mum, dad, mum worked for a charity. Dad um, was music and uh, BT, you know. And me and my sister, my sister Grace, um, and we were the normal kind of, not normal, but just, you know, family. Like, a lot of music in my family, a lot of positive, a lot of families coming over, friends. Every weekend there'd be music. My mum would make wake us up with house music. No. She'd be like, come on, girls. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mum, and now that's why I'm like, rhythm isn't, you know, I just, I just like all the music because they, my mum and dad used to sing together and it was just, it was, a, I was very lucky. I know a lot of people haven't had that, but um for me, it was just kind of a normal, you know, holiday year and we went camping and we went caravanning and yeah. it was kind of very normal and I was very lucky to have quite up parents. Yeah, uh, My grandparents were a massive influence. 
they were always in our lives and uh yeah and then it got to a point where my I think I was about 17 18 and uh I was going off to university Mm. I've worked really I was severely dyslexic so um I worked really hard to try and get to university I was awful at maths English science anything anything. (laughs) I just couldn't and my sister this is my sister was glorious because she taught me maths about three days before I went into an exam. No. Yeah. And my mum worked out a way of teaching me how to learn. And she was like, right, jump on a trampoline and say then the times tables and all this. And my sister would be like, right, go. Like this. And I'd be like, day, five, six, eight. <laughs> so in my exams, I'd be like, I'd jump. Bouncing up and two, down. Four, six. <laughs> and I'd remember for a movement or yeah. like visual. So then I, <laughs> so that sounds really weird, doesn't it? But <laughs> they found ways to get me through that. Yeah. And then I went to university and um, I did um, art and, um, surprisingly, and uh, <clears throat> my parents decided that that was, that you know, they divorced. Oh. So, yeah, so they, they d- decided to split. It just wasn't working. It wasn't like a divorce, like, oh, it wasn't... It, one minute it was just a family and then yeah. the next minute mum and dad were separating. Yeah. My parents were very kind of good. They always, we always had Christmases together. They always um, made sure that me and my sister felt loved and my sister did her exams. I went to uni and then I went to London. So in that space of time, it was kind of like an amazing, amazing childhood. My parents split. My mum moved and my dad stayed in a family home. Um, my dad then remarried. Mm-hmm. Um but I wouldn't say it was kind of like a bad thing. It yeah. was not that I remember. It was just kind of, it happened. Yeah. And we went along with it. And because my parents were very decent in the sense of they, they kind of, I saw them both and they sort of kept us on a path that, yeah, they, I've See, got I had a lot the of same, respect for them. At the same age. Yeah. And my mum and dad can still have Christmases together. Yeah. And yeah. I feel, we had a difficult couple of years where it, that oh, wasn't the case, yeah. but where it sort of transitioned. Yeah. But now I feel so lucky that, you know, if I say to people, yeah. my mum and dad aren't together, they're like, what? I saw them, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Like my parents, this Christmas came um, and filmed, like, well, they're not filmed, but they came into Abbey Road when we were filming oh. and they were like, we're in Abbey Road. <laughs> I was like, chill. They were like, can we sing? I was like, do you want to chill? <laughs> they're like, come on. I'm like, oh, go on then. And so it was nice. It's like they they have always got on for us. And mm. um, I, I'm not saying it was like all rainbows and fairies. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong. But I don't remember it being such a terrible time. Mm-hmm. It was just what happened. And then because I was kind of raised with kind of an upbeat, right, come on, keep on. I kind of kept that. Yeah. And um, at uni, you sort of build a family there anyway. And I, I made friends and... You know, it was just fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a fun time. Did you ever look forward to your like starting a family yourself and becoming a mum? Do you know what? I never really, I I never really thought about it because I was so like, I want to do art and I want to do this, and I was I was quite career focused mm-hmm. in a sense of I I know I wanted to be like c- just keep on track. I I knew I wanted a family for sure because I loved having my family. Yeah, and I loved having my sister, and I kind of knew that I wanted that, but. I'd had a few relationships and stuff, but I kind of never really felt someone to go, I want your children. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) Impregnate me now. Let's go. (laughs) I I never really felt like, come on, let's get married and have babies. (laughs) I never really felt like that. So I was just like, career, let's, let's, let's enjoy London. And I kind of enjoyed my 20s. I kind of went to festivals and travelled and I I kind of had like a really lovely um, time. I still doesn't sound like I'm really... Oh, it's so gross. <laughs> but that I don't goes. know. I just never really thought about family then. Yeah. Um, until I met Mark. And then everything changed. <laughs> Let's go and have a family. Really? Yeah. We we kind of worked and worked, travelled, did some great stuff. And then into like, I think it was like 2015, we were like, shall we try and find somewhere where we can think about having a family? Because I'm a bit older than Mark as well. So... I was like, let's let's go for it. And he was like, yeah, all right, cool. So we found, we bought a house. It wasn't even built. Um, <laughs> classic house. <laughs> and um, they, yeah, it was kind of just like on a, an estate and they built it and it was kind of just, yeah, a little ha- home that we made. And that's where, yeah, we, we bought our house. And um, I don't know if you know this, but we eloped to Las Vegas and got married. Did you? <laughs> yeah. 
We will. Did like... your friends and family know? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. How'd that go. But um, well, it, do you know we had a massive party for them all. Nice. That like, was fine. Yeah. But um, we never really again decided to go and do that. We, <laughs> <laughs> we loved Vegas, and we we're like, should we go to Vegas have some fun? Let's go and have a party. And I went, you know what's going to happen if we go to Vegas? He was like, yeah, we're going to have maybe a bit too much drink and then we'll end up married. Like the hangover, I was like, yeah. He was like, let's go. <laughs> and that, yeah, and that was kind of that. Did you pack a special outfit just in case? Yeah, so um, once that conversation happened, I was like, like, so we've booked Vegas, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, so w- what? I'm like, I ain't going to go there and just wear something from America. <laughs> like, you know, it's going to take a bit of time. Yeah. And um, it was kind of like, it wasn't prepared, but it was. So yeah. we were, we knew we were going for like, I mean, who goes to Vegas for 10 days? No one. You go for like four days because that's all you can sort of survive. <laughs> and then um, we we just flew out and um, I took a dress that I'd found. Um, I went and did all that. Yeah. And I just got a dress. I, I just thought, oh, I'll just get a dress that I've always wanted. And uh, we took, we had a little budget that we took. And we just went there. And I'll tell you what, I had the time of my life. Really? We went to every party, every show. We ate at the restaurants we should never have. You know, like, just, we did the things in your wildest dreams that you'd never do in the sense of, like, we would never eat, like, yeah. on top of a, you know, we just, we didn't, we hadn't done that because we were just, we had nothing, really. So, so the way, just, all that money that you would have spent on a wedding. Yeah. Kind of spent on, <laughs> on, but on. Ten days you, in Vegas. <laughs> 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 but yeah. creating those memories oh and my you know, having that magical time together. It was phenomenal. Yeah. It was such a long day. And yeah. Did you think about how long after that you'd start planning for kids? Uh, no. So <clears throat> it wasn't like planning. No. I, I I think for us, getting married started the call. If, if happens, we had kids happens, now, yeah. it'd be amazing. Um, I remember feeling like, I want a baby. I do want to have a child. I, I want to have something for me and you to like try and a different phase of life almost because yeah. we'd done all those amazing fun things. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was t- 2016. So it wasn't long after I fell pregnant with Phoenix, um, our first son. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Mark was like, you're pregnant. I was like. But before you'd even taken the test? Yeah. I was like, no, no. Which channel? About? He's like, you are pregnant I was like I'm not what were you what? doing that made him <laughs> probably being a whiner or something you know like, oh I feel sick I'm like oh I'm gonna be sick on myself and he's like why are you sick I was like no he's like you're pregnant then like for me I think I was a bit in denial really yeah because I I I we I think we were on holiday and I I got pregnant and I I kind of thought I knew then but I was like no, it doesn't happen like that. People yeah. spend years getting pregnant, and um, and then, <clears throat> and then we got home, and it was a friend's Hendo weekend <laughs> yeah. at Wilderness the festival, right? Right. So I'm like, right, I'm going to a festival. Got me, got me unitard, got me glitter out. I'm like, yeah, I'm going out for a weekend, right? <laughs> Mark goes, you're pregnant. I'm like. No, I'm not. I'm going, I'm to going out the door. I'm, go- I'm <laughs> taking all this and I'm going. He's like, um, I think you should take, well, you're going for a weekend in a tent. You might be pregnant. I think you should try. I was like, oh, do you reckon? He's like, yeah. And then he, <laughs> I did this pregnancy test and I came in and went, oh, God, I'm pregnant. He went, yeah. <laughs> he was over the moon, like, jumping up and down. I remember it was a Sunday morning in bed and he was just absolutely the happiest he's ever been. I'm like this. This is this is not real. This is not real. I'm still going. I'm still going. Right? He's like, Mark, do you think going to wilderness is probably you're, you're feeling sick already? I was like, I'm going. He's like, cool. Should we just decant all of the alcohol out of them bottles and maybe go and get some fake stuff that you can put in there? And then your friends might know because we shouldn't, shouldn't really tell anyone yet, just yeah. in case. <clears throat> I was like, fine, fine. Like this. <laughs> what, what am I doing? I feel like a teen grumpy teenager. Yeah. I literally <laughs> turned into a 16 year old teenager. Like, fine, fine, take me. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because that would be the first moment where all of a sudden you're no longer 
thinking of you. You're putting some all of a sudden. Yeah, a rule I mean, about I, how you can yeah. be. I was quite. I think I'm hugely selfish before I had kids because I was like, I'm just going to go and do this and that and woo hoo hoo hoo. Whereas that moment was like, okay, um, yeah, I don't want anything to happen to this human. But I think I just didn't really like understand what was happening. Yeah, it wasn't until I experienced festival early pregnancy. But I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and I did actually go and I, I was very safe and stuff. I didn't drink and I didn't do all that stuff. But it was quite an experience because I at the time I I had no energy. Yeah. I was the first three months of pregnancy for me, brutal. Really? Whoa. Like no, I get travel sick on a swing. No lie. <laughs> on a coach, on a bus, like you name it. So if I am with child. I am sick, like really <laughs> sick. First three months, I had hypermesis, you know. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I was in hospital on a drip. I basically, I was really sick, really, really sick. Nauseous, mainly. I couldn't eat, couldn't do all that stuff. So that moment then, I was like, that turned for me. Because the minute I got sick and I wasn't like, I was like, I, I, I really want this. Yeah. I, I don't want anything to happen to it. And that's where I shifted and was yeah. like, I'm pregnant. <laughs> so, it, but it's quite hard to be, I'm pregnant when you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a zombie pregnant. <laughs> yeah. So it's quite um, a hard, quite a hard change to go from like that to that. Yeah. But um, Mark really helped me through it because he's just kind of constant. He's my constant of, he's never really like, he, he just remains like calm and collected and, and just himself. So he got me through those three months. And then after three months, it kind of shifted a bit and I just got huge. Really? Yeah. Bowling ball on legs. Did they think you were going to have a big baby? Yeah. So they were like, it's huge. Because Mark's six foot eight. Yeah, yeah they said yeah. this to me. The whole time, you're going to have a nine pound, ten pound baby. I was like, what? <laughs> don't tell me. I don't care. Just don't tell me. Yeah. Do you know? Like, I really think they shouldn't tell you things yeah. like that. Maybe for preparation, it's always good. But yeah, but I think if you think something even bigger than yeah, that was going to come of out, crazy. then you're in your mind. Yeah, Especially when right. I'm sitting looking at a six foot eight man thinking, <laughs> what's happening here? Because I'm like, Honestly, I wouldn't have been able to. I was, I was big. I had, I have always had massive bumps with my children, and um, yeah, it, it got to a point where I was just, I couldn't. I got SPD. Like I just got everything going. You yeah. know what there is, but I still waddled on, and I remained quite like, literally. I waddled <laughs> through, yeah, and uh, <laughs> I got to, I got to the end phase, and I was very proud of myself because at the beginning I didn't really believe much in my body. I wasn't like a massive body confident person yeah um but after i was like wow look at me i've just made of bones and muscles and a human and a beautiful kid yeah so it kind of changed my whole mentality to life in a really good way from for, for, in a non-selfish but yeah. good way yeah i think because growing <clears throat> up i don't know about you but I was always told how we should feel about our bodies and how, yeah. you know, what's right, what, what's wrong. Mm. So you're always looking for those imperfections. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you give birth and you're kind of like, actually, I've not given you credit for anything. Oh, I feel terrible to my body. Like, mm. I, I was always growing up, 14, 16, 18. I was always kind of a bit bigger than my friends and stuff. But I always really embraced it. I had very good friends and supportive family and I was just always kind of a bit more personality than my body I yeah. suppose that's why I, I did that with that um but when I had um my babies I think I just kind of thought well this is this is this is what's happening right now and every someone said to me everything is a phase right with children some yeah. some the best advice someone said to me about having a baby was it's always a phase the phase will end. Remember, like teething, yeah. you know, sickness, da, da, da. And I almost applied that to me. It was a phase that my body had to go through to build that. So I kind of embraced it. I had my moments where I was like, oh, my, everything's changed. Yeah. But um, I found almost peace in that. Yeah. Because I needed to, I, I don't know, I didn't want my kids to feel like that. Yeah. You, you get to a point where you're like, I want him to be kind. I want him to be calm. I don't want him to go to me, Mum. I don't feel like that. I just, I wanted him to just be happy and jolly and get on with life and not be spoiled, but have things that 
we didn't all have, you yeah. know? So, yeah, for me, it did change a lot. What were your um, births like? Um, I was, I think I was quite lucky. I didn't go into my birth like, I've got a plan and this is my set plan. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, there is a massive, massive, I know that everyone has different births, right? But I can't even have a filling without an injection. So I was like, all the drugs. Yeah. And they were like, Roxanne, you should can believe and do this. I was like, I believe, I believe, <laughs> but I need a lot of drugs. <laughs> okay, cool. And they were like, sure. They, they didn't really want to mess with me. Yeah. Because I was very adamant at the time. I would like gas and air and I would like an epidural. They said, let's try it without the epidural. And to be fair, I did try. And I did. I mean, both my first pregnancy, I got to four centimetres dilated without really even knowing. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was walking around. So every time I walked, um, I would get what I thought. I would get a lot of Braxton Hicks, but yeah. I would get a lot of pain. And um, my waters were trickling. Sorry, but they were. I mean, you're in the right place to share, don't <coughs> you, yeah, Harry? I mean, yeah. yeah. And um, they they said to me, um, okay, well, yeah, but I don't think it is. And I was like, well, I'm not wet myself like, every day. <laughs> what are you chatting about? And they were like, no, no, just keep walking. It'll be fine. And, you know, it's your first baby. You, you're kind of more paranoid. I think we were in triage like 20 times in a two week. Well, maybe less than that. Maybe like eight. Mark will say it's like 20 times. But um, he was like, we can't go to triage again. I was like, I oh, know. Let's go to triage. <laughs> so they were very good with me. But, yeah, it was trickling a lot. And um, in the end, it was... Uh, I had was just contracting like naturally and uh, yeah I got to hospital with Phoenix and me and Mark got there and they were like you're four centimetres well done I was like what <laughs> yes <laughs> How, oh this is going to be fine like this and then they were like okay let's, you're, you're admitted and I was like cool 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 and um, I went in it very positive I was like I'm going to breathe through I'd done a lot of breathing. I'd done a lot of all that stuff. I can hold my breath for four minutes over nice. four minutes. Good. So That's I'm, a, yeah, amazing. <laughs> free <skill>. diving. <laughs> it's a different time in my life. And um, I, uh, I, I just thought, do you know what? I'm going to try and apply that. And whatever happens, happens. Because yeah. I just want a healthy baby. Yeah. So that was it. Um, I got to five and I thought I was going to kill Mark. <laughs> Legit, sort of, just kill him. So <laughs> he was like, Hello, hello, someone help her. <laughs> I was like, epidural. Now, cool. And that was it. I had an epidural. Um, and I, and after my epidural, I, and I, the first pregnancy was not filmed. My second was. Um, and my, but my first was pretty, it was kind of just went through it 12 hours, 12 hours active labor. And then yeah. I pushed him out in about 15 minutes. And yeah, I, you know, the usual stuff, but it, it was very like me and Mark. One thing though, he was born on April Fool's Day. Oh, that is the best thing yeah. ever. You cannot write that stuff. <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> and do you know what happened? I haven't told anyone this because I don't know if it's that right, but I will. Basically, the nurse and Mark had conspired to wind me up a little bit. Right. They didn't yeah. play an April Legit. Fool's joke on yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Baby come out. It's a girl. Oh, no, they didn't. And I went, what? <laughs> like this. I was jolly whatever. I was really hot at drugs. And they were like, it's a girl. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh no. What? <laughs> and they were like, I'm only joking. It's April Fool's Day. <laughs> Legally, can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> but I was wetting myself. I was like, this is the best. It was, it sounds cruel, but it was so good. And it wasn't even filmed with nothing. It was just like, <laughs> and I was on gas there. I was like, oh, <laughs> this is so funny. I love it. The fact that April Fool's joke was played on you. Yeah. When giving birth. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I, I, most people probably complain about it, but I actually thought, thank God you've just got me through delivering my placenta and doing all those stitchy yeah. things. Because that's what that moment was. Yeah. So she she just cracked a joke. And I was like, <laughs> you just didn't crack a joke. You can deliver my next one. <laughs> and she did. Did she? Yeah, she was on, She no lie, she was on the ward when I went into labour with my second. 
How was the second? What made you film this one rather than the first? Um, I just wanted it documented because I there are parts of Phoenix's where I don't remember. Yeah. And also I wanted to show uh, my experience. In, that, in the 18 years, yeah. in 18 years time when they, they're back chatting, you can show you them. You can't go, see it. Look. Because <laughs> it's <laughs> just kind of... You. But no, it was more like the build up because Mark is wonderful birthing partner in the sense like he cracks jokes. He brings TV quizzes. Does he? Oh, so annoying. But he brings like these apps that, you know, like, um, what's those with Bradley Walsh what's that um, uh, the chase yeah so he brings the chase app right I hate the chase <laughs> and he'll what is the leading number one seller? so he'll like take my mind off it he told dad jokes annoying um, uh, but he, he just entertains me because he knows how to keep yeah. my mind off of being in pain and he doesn't like me being in pain because he just wants to help so he I wanted that documented because there are many dads in the world and there are many mums having yeah. birth and stuff, but no one has really seen, I don't think, what our labour was like. Um, and in in all fairness, my second, Kobe, he was born and as I pushed him out, I was going, <laughs> I laughed him out. No lie. <laughs> and not because of all the drugs, but I was just like... <laughs> and it was... Just, I get this euphoric like thing when I'm in labour where I just laugh. Yeah, I can't. I think maybe it's a nervous thing or I don't know, but it's it was proof because I was like, I swear I laughed and pushed Phoenix out, but this time we filmed it because why not? I think yeah. everyone needs to see different births. There are so many in the world and yeah. so many that I respect, but I just wanted that for me as well because I felt like it was my last as well. I felt like I didn't know if I'd have another one. Yeah. So I kind of just wanted that for me, really. Yeah. What was it like seeing Mark in the hospital holding Phoenix? Um, wh well, I have a very fond memory of sitting in the bed and Mark sitting and it was a morning and the light was coming in and he had his new little baby grow on that fit and Mark was sitting there and I took a photo of him but I remember sitting there thinking that is my whole life in and, and Phoenix fit in Mark's hand like it, he was tiny and he was holding his head going is that is that how I do it and I was like yeah yeah and that moment for me and then the nurse bringing in toast and us sitting there having our first breakfast almost. Yeah. And um, and then Mark picked up, you know, a rubber ring, <laughs> blew it up, put it on his head and went, there you go. <laughs> like this. You know, like a rubber ring that you sit on. I sent him out to get a rubber ring that I could sit on because I was in so much pain. Yeah. He put it on his head, holding my baby like that. And that moment where it just snapshots of Mark with a pink rubber ring on his head holding my kid, I was like... That's just my life. Did it kind of reassure you as well in that moment? Yeah. Because even such a monumental thing has happened. And actually yeah. what Mark did, and he seems so good at, from what you're saying, mm. is bringing it back. Yeah. It was like, okay, it's not totally changed who we are. Yeah. And uh, it, it, he still managed, like, it made me laugh. It broke that kind of like, oh, this is really serious. It kind of made me realise that we can still be us as parents and still parent and family how, how we do. Yeah. And and everyone does that, I suppose, in their thing. But at that moment in time, it was a, uh, uh, oh, it was kind of relief for me. And I was like, right, I can, I can, I can do this with this man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad. <laughs> it was just like, you worry <laughs> though, moment, don't you? Good moment. <laughs> is it going to be a dad? <laughs> Am I going to be a good mom? Like, you just don't ever know. Everything with parent, kids and parenting is yeah. just worrying, I think. Have you found moments where it has just been quite overwhelming? Yeah. Yes, I have. Phoenix having colic was brutal mm. um put to a point colleague well, it was every and he would just cry and cry and cry and I would say for two weeks three maybe three or four cry everywhere we went like baby sensory and things like that I would turn up to those things with Phoenix and he would just cry he hated them he didn't like anything sensory he didn't like anything he, he how just, did you feel in those moments I was sad, but I, do, do you know what? I, I, I 
would get myself up and go and do those things yeah. because my friends that I had met had gone, come, you know, all the babies love it. And I would go and I, I, I did try and enjoy them. But in my in honesty, like I liked sort of putting him on the mat and just doing what I could achieve. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But I did that to, to get him out and socialize him and do all those things that they tell you to do. Um, but he just didn't like it. I swear one time Phoenix went, I hate it. <laughs> Like, I swear he swore. I can't swear. <laughs> I swear he went. And I swear that was his, like, first word at one of those things. And I said it to Mark. I went, I swear he told me that where we went today was. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, <laughs> no lie. <laughs> and in the end, I just thought, do you know what? I ain't doing it to myself. I'm not going to conform to what everyone's making me do yeah. and try and pressure myself. I... Just did what I could. And it was hard because people were like, well, why don't you want to come out and do this and that and have coffee with us and drink with us anymore and do this? I was like, because I physically can't do it. Yeah. I'm, Felix didn't sleep. Hour and a half, two hours every night he would wake. And he did that for that about a year. Awful. He didn't sleep fully f till a year and a half. Right. Um. So I, it was hard. It was a change. And it was like, whew. but I still dealt with it. I had my mum and my sister and, you know, Mark and that, who got me through it um, and some friends, you know, I, I I, think I didn't. There were times that were like teething especially. Yeah. I don't know whether it's just because with the boys, but f teething was brutal. Mm. I'm talking screaming in the night. Like me and Mark went on holiday, right? We went on a little family holiday. We thought first holiday. Oh, I don't know what it was. We were stupid, maybe six months in, yeah. seven months, and we thought, he's a baby. It, was, it wasn't was a big holiday. And our family had been there a part of it as well, so it was kind of like a break. Three days straight, Phoenix cried. On the last day of the holiday, he got two front teeth. Oh. So for, for us, we were like, that's teething. Cool. <laughs> Like it was a shock for me. I didn't. They no one tells you about that. But then I had Kobe, and he was like, "I've got a tooth." Like, <laughs> so funny how different they can be. Yeah, yeah. Just it's just their personalities, and that's who they are. Yeah, they are like that. I mean, it's me and Mark. Kobe's Mark. <laughs> Phoenix is me. <laughs> Drama. <laughs> Chill. That's that's it. That's it. Parenthood is hard. Mm -hmm. Motherhood is hard. And it has an effect on relationships. I think it touches yeah. every single area. Mm. How has it affected you and Mark? I think we're just really tired. <laughs> <laughs> we're just tired. Uh, we've just um, probably... Has creating the videos and stuff helped you keep the laughter there? Oh, yeah. So I think when we first had children, like, it was hard because... You lose date nights. You lose quite, well, not. You don't lose them, but we we don't have family really nearby. So yeah. you know, par Mark's parents are in Nottingham. My parents are in Kent, and some in London. You know, so and we didn't really have. We moved to an area we didn't really know anyone. Yeah. So when you don't have sort of childcare and stuff that you trust or you know, um, your life just becomes about parenting, and you kind of have to have takeaways in or yeah. date nights in and stuff. So for our life changed socially. I would say we were real social people we'd go out we'd go to festivals music we'd go away and whatever um, but I would say for us we lost all that because we didn't actively keep doing it because we just we couldn't cope with like no sleep and yeah. trying to be parents to the best and um, Lad Baby brought us a, an amazing thing in the sense of you know like we Mark would say, um, he'd say, oh, we're going somewhere this weekend and we're going to do something. He wouldn't tell me. And then, you know, for instance, one weekend we went ice skating together and we mm. filmed it. And through Lab Baby, we managed to get sort of our kind of life that we had before yeah. back. Because we, I mean, it, I mean, I've, I haven't been ice skating since the dawn of time. <laughs> but, you know, we went maybe with the boys, I will now. But we, we did that or we went to a rally show or we, you know, we've been to sort of some parties or a book launch, you know, like we've, we've done some, um, we've been invited to some amazing places, but I would say that's what we lost mainly. Yeah. And we didn't take time to, um, it mainly it was due to us because we didn't go, right, we need a date night once a week, da, 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 because we just didn't feel comfortable leaving Phoenix. I think yeah. we were just quite like, 
let's just get through this. And it wasn't for a year or two that we decided, right, now we'll go out and do that sort of stuff. And it wasn't just Lab Baby, but I would say Lab Baby brought us experiences that I would never have even thought we'd do parenting, yeah. if you get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Have you surprised yourself as a mum? Yeah. You. Well, yeah. Yeah. And it's really weird. Mark was talking to me about this the other day. I have surprised myself mainly because when your kids say stuff to you, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I Phoenix, especially my first. I didn't realise how much, uh, how much personality he has, mm-hmm. um, but how much like he's absorbed. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone always says to me, which I love, like is your boy's so kind he's so like he's so kind and it was i think it was like a you know you you don't ever think i don't know i don't ever think oh i'm kind and i'm i'm yeah. funny and i don't think like that but it's not until you see your kids that you think there's a few things in there that you recognize of yourself or how you've been brought up yeah. and that's what surprised me that i was able to through all the chaos and all of the Oh, this is parenting. It, he's still not totally crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he's just like a normal kid, and he's just like a, quite a kind boy. And he's when his brother came, when Kobe came, like he's like he's my brother, and he was very gentle and very like just. Oh, I'm really. He said, I remember one day he went to me. I'm really grateful for you, Kobe. And I oh. wasn't there. I know. And sometimes he'll go, thanks, thanks for um, having me, Mum. I'm like, what? How do you understand that concept? Like, he's, he's well, nearly four this year, but I, there are things that he sometimes says to me. Mainly, though, of some things I have passed down where he goes, "That's a bit of you, Mum." <laughs> I'm like, oh God, I've been watching Long Island too long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so there's sort of things that I'm like, wow. But some things do surprise me in the sense of, yeah, we've managed to keep them. I don't know, that that we have actually transferred down to them and they've learned a lot from... Phoenix especially has gained a lot of confidence through Lab Baby. Really? Yeah, because he quite, he's quite a shy boy in the sense of... But Lab Baby, he's like... He lo- he enjoys being with his dad and yeah. he has time on his dad. You know, he has his um, Lab Baby and Sons channel on YouTube and that is time for him and his dad to do play with toys and do yeah, fun yeah. things. So... He's benefited, I would say, a lot from that and learnt a lot, like, you know, from the places we've visited. Yeah. And there's not many four, three-year-olds that get to do that, so... It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Look, I think it's one thing looking at your kids and kind of going, look what I've achieved. Yeah. It's also kind of like, look what you've helped them achieve. Yeah, yeah. They, they, I, can't, I can't imagine them being teenagers and kind of growing up and all of that phase, especially... Yeah. Like, this is going to be a winner. But <laughs> I... I I am. Um, I can't, I'm very pleased that I've got that far with them. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Because I didn't actually, at some points in being a mum, think, "Poor mate, am I going to do this for another few years? Like yeah, yeah. forever, actually." Yeah. Rox, you do, it's not. Yeah, a few it feels years. relentless, doesn't no, it? Yeah. There's certain moments that just feel like they're never ending. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like obviously me and Mark with lab baby he edits films runs everything and yeah. we do everything so there are our time and everything is just completely always full of that so i'm i'm really pleased we've managed to make time to keep them yeah. and and to make them into the kids they are if you get what i mean mm. but i'm biased because i'm their mother <laughs> i'll always say people probably think oh God, her kids are nightmare <laughs> i doubt it <laughs> so my next book is uh called letters on motherhood right uh and oh, i, I was wondering it's ba- yeah. basically it, there are a series of letters all around motherhood it's basically yeah. the clues in the title um and i was wondering if you could write a letter on motherhood who would it be to and what would it say oh wow okay I mean, everyone's going to say it, but I would probably write a letter to my mum. Really? Yeah, to say thanks for keeping me in the world and actually protecting me from a lot of negativity and thingy and keeping me positive. And to s- even now, like at Christmas, my mum was like, keep going. 
you can, you know, this is for the trust trust. My mum was the one who was like, you've got to do it for the trust trust. You know, she she's a force of kind of positivity in my life. And I think I would, I never, growing after having kids, yeah. I think I was like very unappreciative of what my parents did for me. And um, I <laughs> was a stroppy teenager and I'd fight with my sister. And uh, me and my sister, I swear, some days would get up and go, how are we going to annoy them today? <laughs> like, you yeah, know, so yeah. for me, I would say thank you for putting up with me and surviving it because my dad was at work far more than what, you know, we are now. And she was a very career motivated woman as well. She ran a charity and she was a force of what she probably she doesn't realise. She actually worked bought us up picked us up as well got us going and did all that stuff and I don't I genuinely don't know how she did that I, I genuinely don't because I, I couldn't I just couldn't do it all and I try and it's, it fails miserably sometimes but I would probably write to her and just say thanks for uh you know still being here as well because she's kind of here now to see it all and um her, everything that she's put into us as has come out. I, uh, yeah, I've never you really... You can really tell that your mum has had a massive influence. Like, yeah. from what you said about her at the start, you can see how you have taken some of those qualities on. Yeah, I've I've tried. I've tried to... I mean, most of the things I know are from what my mum sort of taught me and will even tell me now, um, or has just brought me up in that way. And I think I am, I am grateful for that. But I, I wasn't until... I had children because yeah. of how hard it is and you don't realise that. And back then, there was no scrolling at 3pm no, no, on no. Instagram. There was no, like, anything to get you through. Yeah. Like, he just did that straight. Well, no, I think I've only just realised as well, like, recently how, for me, my mum is still doubting herself, still yeah. wondering if, you know, like, do we think she's done a good job? Now that we are parents, yeah. there's that extra layer of, do you think I did a good job with you? Like, you know, and that yeah. breaks my heart that my mum feels like that. Yeah, and not every mum's perfect at all. Like, there are things that I remember and don't remember and there's things that I will do probably. But I think my mum, even now, she'll, I'll say something like, thanks, like in a card for her birthday, thanks for being here, I love you. You know, like, thanks for getting me through some of the hardest times in my life. And she, she'll she go, what? That's a surprise. <laughs> what? I didn't do that, did I? Like, she doesn't remember. Yeah, I think yeah. she's blocked everything out. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite nice to to remind and to go to her, look, nah, man, you, you did uh, a wonderful thing because I'm, I, I, I'm on, I feel like I, I owe a lot to her. Yeah. Because she did. She poured everything in. Yeah. Um, whether or not you choose to take that on is a different thing, isn't it? And yeah. there are things that have happened that have never been great, but, you know, losing people and stuff. But, I think for me, yeah, I would write a letter to her and just say, thanks. Nice. You're wonderful. <laughs> thanks for pushing me out, y'all. <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we end each episode uh, with you finishing three sentences. Oh, yeah, yeah. Being a mum means? You live your best life very tired. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Without any sleep. <laughs> Since being a mum, I... Don't have a social life, but we'll change that. Oh, really? In the future. <laughs> the future. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I'm happy when. Um. Oh, when I'm in PJs on the sofa eating, watching films with my kids and my family. Yeah. Lovely. Basic. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming oh, on. Thank You've you been for having me. Delight. Honestly, oh, I can't you. tell you how much joy you give me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>